Hello everyone, this is an IB physics exam walkthrough. Um, this one is a paper one from May 2018. I'll try and provide the link in the description below. Um, so we're starting off with page two, which is the beginning of the exam. Um, question one here, student measures the radius R of a sphere with an absolute uncertainty of delta R. What is the fractional uncertainty in the volume of the sphere? So let's have our data booklet in front of us. Um, this is the snippet from the uncertainties and error sections. I'm just going to scooch that over here. Okay, and then of course we need to know that we're talking about uh, the volume of a sphere. So let's just write that in. The volume of a sphere is going to be equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Now, the the 4 and the 3, we're not worried about those. Those are going to be constant values. They've got nothing to do with uncertainty. And indeed, pi has nothing to do with uncertainty. So we're really just interested in this r value. And that's going to be our measurement of the radius. And then the error, or the uncertainty, is the, the absolute uncertainty is this delta r. So the question is, with regards to the equation, hopefully you can see there that we have a power ratio going on. Uh, sorry, we have a, a power function going on. So let's zoom in on this part of our equation. The delta y is now our delta r in this question because we're talking about radius and over the measurement r. And we can see hopefully that we have this n delta y over over y. What's the n? Well, that's going to be 3, isn't it? Because it's it's the power function. So what we've shown is, well, actually, we can put it like that. And that means that the n is going to be, this n value is our 3. So we can show that it's actually 3 delta r over r. That's the fractional uncertainty of the volume of a sphere. So the answer must be b. Okay, here we have a, a river crossing question. Uh, so I always like to set up my realistic sketches. Here's one bank for the river. Here's the other bank. Um, of course, we're, we're referencing north, south, uh, east and west. So let's put that on here as well. And the question is asking if um, riv a river flows north, which was shown in the, in the schematic, a boat crosses river so that it only moves in the direction east of its starting point. So let's go ahead and say that it starts here. Let's say this is the start. And it's only going to head east. Okay, so this um, is interpreted as literally this is the path the boat is going to take. It's going to go from the start perfectly east and that's all there is to it. So it's going to arrive here. It's going to finish exactly east of its starting point. But the river is flowing north. So what do we do? Well, we're going to recreate this as a vector sum, I suppose. And it's kind of backwards because I've already put in the first, um, I've already put in the last vector. This vector here, this dotted line, this would be the resultant. This is the resultant of two vectors and the two vectors we're talking about here are going to be the direction that the boat has to head in other words the the direction or the vector of the boat through the water and the vector of the river itself well we know the vector of the river itself because we're told that it's it's north so i'm going to add this on sort of backwards there it is that's the direction of the of the uh of the river and then the boat, this means that the boat, of course, has to head ever so slightly upstream at some sort of angle to the, to the, to the bank. So this is going to be the, the velocity of the boat. And this is the velocity of the river. So this resultant, this is the velocity, um, I guess, the real the real velocity, what you would actually observe um, with regards to the bank of the river. And so I've done a vector sum. I've said that these two vectors together combine to make this 
resultant red vector here. And so when we look at the question, it's saying, what is the direction in which the boat must be steered or what, what direction must it be headed? Well, it has to be, has to be direction C right here. Okay, so question three is a kinematics question. So let's go ahead and pull in our data sheet equations just so we can have a peek. So here we go. Um, here's our subtopic 2.1 motion. Uh, not worried about forces, so let's scooch this all the way over here. Hopefully you know these formulas well. Um, well, let's start drawing and sketching our scenario and hopefully we can figure out what's going on. So we have an object being projected vertically upwards at a time zero. So let's let's say the object begins here. This is at time zero. And well, air, air resistance is negligible, thankfully. Um, the object passes the same point above its starting position. Okay, so it's gonna fly up and it's gonna pass this imaginary point. So up it goes this way. It's gonna pass this point. It's gonna keep going, but then it's gonna come back down. Okay, and it's coming back down, it's passing the same point here and here, and we're told it's passing this same point at two seconds and at eight seconds. Okay, so um, that means it takes, it passes it at two seconds. So let's go ahead and write some values in here. It's going to take two seconds to go from the starting point to this uh, checkpoint, if you like, this dotted line. And then it's going to go all the way up and come back down in at eight seconds. So that means this period of motion, the up and the down, took eight minus two, which is six seconds. It took six seconds to go up and down in this section, which means at the very top, let's put this in green, at, this, at the very top, this point here, it's taken two seconds to go from the starting point to the dotted line, and then another three seconds, because that's half of six. So it's taken five seconds to reach the very, very top. So let's talk about this with regards to the very, very top, because we know something about the very, very top, and that's very, very important. What do we know about the top? Well, we just figured out that it took a certain time to get there. So two plus three is five seconds. But what's more important that we know that at the top, if we consider the top bit to be the end of the motion that we're trying to investigate, we know the speed. Okay, we know the final velocity, if you like, at the top is going to be zero. Okay, and that's crucial. It gives us a little bit of information. Uh, we were also told that we have a negative 10 acceleration. Um, obviously, that's from gravity. And, well, let's put that as G, because that's gravity. And what we're trying to find is the initial velocity, U. Okay, so what we should be doing is looking at our different formulas and saying, well, which ones do we have? Well, we have U, G, V, and T. Well, U, V, G, but it's really A, and T. So we're going to be using this formula right here. And if we do so we should very quickly get a solution. So let's go ahead and use it. Um, we're going to rearrange it. We're going to solve for u. So u is going to be v minus at. So this initial speed is going to be v, which is the final. So that's 0 meters per second minus the acceleration. So that's negative 10 multiplied by, I should put it in brackets, negative 10, I'm running out of space, and the time is five seconds, five seconds, there we go, all in brackets, well, nice simple uh, calculation, that gives us a positive 50 meters per second, so the answer must be A.